Welcome to the Reawakening Ancient Feminine Wisdom in Pregnancy, Birth, and Motherhood Summit. I'm your host, Nancy Lucina, and today Sarah Durham Wilson will be joining us. Once a rock journalist in New York City and LA, her Saturn return viscerally ended one life and began another, one devoted wholly to the goddess. A teacher and retreat leader, she's journeyed thousands of women through witch awakenings onto the priestess path, and she now leads them across the bridge of the archetypal Maiden to Mother passage, which is her current focus and devotion. Today, Sarah and I discuss the tale of the goddess Inanna and how this relates to our own passage into motherhood. Welcome, everyone. Today, we have with us Sarah Durham Wilson from sarahdurhamwilson.com, and she is a new postpartum beautiful goddess right now with a very tiny baby at home so thank you so much for joining us today i know you are a very very busy woman these days <laughs> my pleasure it's, i was i was just telling you um probably the first day i feel capable of even connecting to someone in the outside world and <laughs> pleasure to, you know. so it came at a perfect time good uh -huh. yeah Clips. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, the energy. I think before, like, you would have been like, "Ooh, is she okay?" <laughs> Two days ago, we cancel this and talk about postpartum. But um, yeah, I no. know. I hear you. It was kind of in the I'm same. So I want to jump in with um, talking about the feminine archetypes, because this is something that you speak about so eloquently and beautifully, and something that's so near and dear to my heart and I really try to when I work with women as a doula I try to prepare them for this transition from maiden to mother mm -hmm. so maybe for anyone watching who doesn't really even understand what feminine archetype a feminine archetype is can you explain a little bit the the maiden and the mother and how we embody those at different times in our lives and what it what the archetype even means sure I, I, I um I have lots of ways to talk about it, but the easiest way for me and the energy of post-eclipse is really a, more than ever a return to the earth as our essential teacher. Mm -hmm. And so the earth can teach you and the moon can teach you in a lot of different ways about the different energies of maiden and mother. Spring and the waxing moon are both um, archetypally uh, maiden. Uh, they are uh, the beginnings of things, newness, um, a rushing towards a birth, um, a becoming of, in our time, um, a youth, a youngness, an innocence, a searching, a seeking, um, and um, an innocence, um, and something that sort of needs to be protected, like the way when, when flowers are just starting to uh, spring up in spring, you know, you always get scared that there's going to be a frost or a heavy, because they're not quite, or like baby chicks, you know, baby animals, you want to protect them, you know, um, they um, are not in their power yet, right? They're not strong yet. Uh, they're not uh, capable yet of protecting themselves and uh, they haven't found their place in the world. They don't know who they are yet, and they are just becoming. And then the mother is uh, the full moon, summer. Um, it's the essence of fullness, uh, ripeness. Um, and it is someone who, it is um, some, you know, the, I'm a little distracted by my baby. But <laughs> so oh, no problem. If you needed, yeah. It's, oh, no, no, no. This whole summit is all about motherhood, so I let's know, just be real course. here. <laughs> So if a so if a woman if so it's the difference between a girl and a woman is maiden and mother. Um, mm -hmm. So we live in a patriarchal culture which we are finally shifting out of. But as you know, it's a real struggle to and every day um, the patriarchy can really push you back down into girl who needs saving, who needs protection, who needs help. You know, who thinks that something outside of her can save her, and that's. Um, when I'm talking about the newness um, and still looking for herself, still looking for her place in the world, the mother is that rooted, self-protecting, um, strong enough to protect others, care for others. Um, you know, the way the full moon gives off so much light um, and serves so, you know, so much, uh, 
so many around her. Um, and the, um, the summer is like the ripeness. And it's like that, it's uh, when we were in mother, we were in the summer of our lives. We were in the full moon of our lives. Um, mm -hmm. After that, we will be waning. Um, mm -hmm and returning back to the earth um just like a flower if you think of like a bud pushing up through the earth that's the maiden and if you think of the uh, the burst open flower that's the mother that she gives to the other which is in the word mother it's about mm -hmm. serving the other and when we serve the other we are served like when you serve your child you feel served when your child mm -hmm. is happy you feel happy we we learn that there is no other um mm -hmm. And in the maiden, we really have that bud, that armor around us where it's, that's the ego and protecting us, ourselves to, to find our place in the world, to seek out. Um, and then the mother is, has found herself and she is self-sourced and she can then source to the other, give to the other. And then the flower starts to die. The petals start to lose, you know, she starts to lose her petals and she starts to wane and then return to the earth and then the cycle continues like the waning moon, the fall, the winter before the spring. Right. Right. Yeah. So let's talk about that death process in there. You mentioned the, <laughs> the petals falling off. Um, that's something that I really think is so important to talk to women, especially who are, who are pregnant and going to be moving into this archetype. Mm -hmm. Um, that there's a part of them that needs to die and be reborn. And I just don't think that that's talked about enough and that can manifest itself in so many different ways. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that death process and maybe a little bit about your own story and how you've dealt with that. Like what tools can, can you give women just a few tools right now, if you could offer them something? Well, I'm in this place because I've, gone through that that I am probably in the becoming time of, of mother you know I've gone through the death of my maiden something I studied for a long time but it, as you know until you embody it it's there's just nothing like it you know yeah. it's like it's like you can like memorize answers for a test you know but you don't really know the answer exactly it's hard to explain no yeah I hear you <laughs> But really going through it, um, I, you know, I think of the caterpillar, like, and all the books I read, my baby have caterpillars in them. I think it's really <laughs> but I think of, of, you know, to really go through the transformation process, the caterpillar, when she goes in there, she doesn't know, well, this is something we all have to go through and it's going to be fine. I'm going to come out with these gorgeous wings and I'm going to fly. She's like, all right, I have to die now. She yeah. really thinks she's dying and she mm. does. Mm -hmm. you know um and so when i was going through it i'd say i'd say i struggled with postpartum depression not because i i wanted to like swallow my baby whole like i'm obsessed with my baby so it wasn't <laughs> those symptoms uh-huh attachment it wasn't that at all in fact people were like whoa like can you put your baby down and i'd be like no <laughs> <You know? laughs> i will eat you if you ask me to put my baby down. Um, but it was more, um, you know, we don't have the village that yeah. cares for us anymore. So like after a month, people stopped checking in on mm. me mm. Uh, and assuming, oh, she must have it now, you know? Right. You know, yesterday, my place was a mess. Um, and you know, I was in my bathroom until four o'clock every day. And then I'd be like, oh, and I'd have like dreams of my teeth falling out because like I was, couldn't, br I didn't brush my teeth until like four, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. It was just like, because it was just the baby, the baby, the baby, you know, mm -hmm. and I hadn't become mother yet to be like, okay, life doesn't happen to me. Life happens through me. Mm. I decide what the schedule is. I decide. I can put her down to care for me. I have to care for me mm. to care for this child, you know? Mm -hmm. And we can, like, people can tell you those metaphors. They can say, the oxygen mask has to go on before and all okay. that stuff. Yeah. But until you get burned by that lesson, you don't learn it. And True. that's, like, you know, that's one of my sayings is it, for me and women on this path, for some reason, things have to burn to learn for us to learn mm. I don't know why. And so it like hurt like crazy. I was like, 
this is not sustainable. This isn't working, you know, that um, the baby comes before me. But I wanted, because I had such a, you know, this brings up the mother wound in all of us when we have a child. And because my mother and I didn't have a good relationship and I felt rejected by her at an early age, I was obsessed with my child knowing how much I loved her. And also because, you know, she, her father is not in her life because um, he's not a safe person. So I wanted to be both for her too, like double the love. Like mm. I was putting all this pressure on me to right. reverse the wounding that I had had, you know? Mm. So I died, I'm still dying because like this, I used to do interviews like this, like every week, you know, and then I, you know, I was, I was doing retreats and courses and then I just, you know, I can't right yeah. now. Really. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know if you watched Girls with Lena Dunham. Did you I've watch seen that? a few episodes, yeah. <laughs> well, in the last season, she gets pregnant and the dad is not in the baby's life. And the final episode, um, she, this isn't like a spoiler alert, but it's, it's funny because she's a hardcore feminist and she's interviewing for a job and she's like, and she's clearly pregnant and she's like, don't worry, I plan to work through my entire pregnancy and I'm only gonna stop to birth the baby and then I'm gonna keep going and doing right. exactly, everything is gonna be exactly the same. And that's yeah, yeah, doing. yeah. Nothing will change, I promise you. And the woman is interviewing her and she's just laughing. Like, you can think that all you want, you know, um, but everything will change. And that's, that's really hard to oh my God. Even communicate to women because I think... Uh, yeah. Like, what do you think that's about? Hanging on to that maiden phase, not wanting to let go, not wanting to, like, have that death rebirth or just part of the process? The funny thing is, you know, I was joking. is like, I wasn't even that happy with my life before. Why was I clinging on to it so mm. desperately? Because it was clinging on to the known. Mm -hmm. And this is too feminine, empty mystery in time when it's like, who am I going to, if I let go and I sink into this endless pit, who am I going to be on the other side? You know? Yep. Um, and so watching like all my friends doing courses and retreats and I was like, do I exist? Like, am I just, uh, you know, I, I am so invisible. I, I've had dreams where I was a ghost, like, especially with like younger guys, because, you know, when you, when you go from me, I mean, I can talk about mating the mother till like cows come home. That's why I teach about it so much. But yeah. it's like, <laughs> you walk through a corridor where you don't really exist when you're in the transition. You're not one thing and you're not another. You know, you're no longer made and you're no longer mother. You're in this invisible corridor. And mm. so younger guys, like the guys in their 20s, like I can walk by them in the grocery store and I could be like naked tap dancing and they wouldn't see. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's like, it's, and it's a really weird feeling, you know? Yeah. And, then you have to own that the mother is, um, her, her strength is her internal beauty, which mm -hmm. is the eternal beauty, what mm -hmm. is internal. Mm. And so we have to, we come, we live in a culture that tells women their only power and source of power is external, you know, right. their, their looks. Um, and so why we have to revive this passage is so women can, you know, move through this and become powerful internally, which is really the only true power, you know? So, um, but yeah, I mean, to actually go through this transition, you know, has been really scary. It really has. Like, and, and now it's like, not only do I not exist, but is my only function a, a mother, mm. you know, mm -hmm. not my only function is a baby servant, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> is a milk truck, you know? Right. right. Um, so we shall see. I mean, it's still being, it's, I'm still rising from the ash, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Did you have to go through a particular kind of death rebirth portal during your labor? I had a C. She was breached okay. last minute. Ah, I okay. I've been able to do that. Um, okay, okay. So that's been its own struggle is like the healing is much slower. Right. Um, you don't get to bounce back, you know. Right. Well, yeah, the bounce <laughs> back. That's a bit of a... That's, you know, if you read, if you read people magazine, right. it comes back, but no, but, <laughs> but, um, I, that's been hard because then I didn't get my little maiden figure back 
right away. And I'm, you know, and I'm, and I had to deal with like taking up space and looking different and mm. being, you know, I look much more like the goddess carvings on the cave walls, you know, from matriarchal time when women were allowed to be big. Right. Every sense of the word, you mm. know? Yeah. Yeah. Like right. You know, it's literally small doesn't fit me anymore. And I do mean that in every, I cannot be small. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I have to give those clothes away because I'm not going to try to become something I was uh, that defeats the whole, everything I just went through, you know, to, right. I, have, I have, I have changed. And um, instead of look, it will kill me to keep looking back, you know, mm. I have to allow what has transpired and rise into that and own it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. forward and also set a standard for my child of what's beauty and what is happiness and absolutely that. Yeah. yeah definitely um you talk about how you have to go down to get your what was the wording that you used? It's a descent process, right? This transition from maiden to mother. And I really love the way that you word that. And you talk about going into the underworld. And actually, when I trained to be a doula, we learned the Inanna, the story of the goddess Inanna. Yeah, because we, we were taught, you know, that that's actually how it is. So I know we don't have a ton of time and I know you do like an entire course on this, which we'll get to at some point, but I'm wondering if you could briefly give us perhaps the, the story of Inanna and, and who she is and why she is so potent for women going into becoming a mother. So funny because this, there was this moment this morning and I was like, this interview might not happen. Um, because like I didn't know when my stepmother was coming and blah, blah, blah. And then, so when you become mother, um, the, so in Maiden, we, the outside voices are so strong. That's, you know, we're constantly pulled by the external and, and people's opinions and people's um, advice and judgment and blah, blah, blah. And part of the, the descent into mother is the descent into oneself. Inanna is literally the journey of going in, Anna, like it, in honor of ourselves. Mm. Um, her name is the in, her name. It speaks to the inner journey, mm -hmm. uh, and um, so the loud. The more you're going in, the louder the internal voice is, which is you know, woman's superpower is her internal guidance, her in, instinct. You know, inside. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, and it's funny. Um, I, I the that voice said. Uh, this, you know, no, this, this, this interview, uh, will be helpful and this interview should happen. And it's, I haven't been able to think about Inanna since before, since three months ago, before Ava was born. Uh -huh. I'm thrilled to tell you a little bit about her, basically. Uh, <laughs> and even the word interview is interesting. Um, so, um, there's this amazing teacher named Michael Brown. He wrote The Presence Process. It's funny, I thought you were Australian for some reason. And he, uh, he, he spent a lot of time with the indigenous. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, he loves wordplay like that. And I just, I, I live for the codings, mm. the, the treasures within words. Yeah. Um, like other and mother, you know, because the maiden right. cannot serve the other because she, she has not how can if we have not healed herself how can we if we're still waiting to be saved how can we save anybody else you know mm, the mother yeah. has saved herself therefore can help others you know um no one can save you but she can guide you um so anana was a sumerian goddess at the end of uh the time of matriarchy i am not a uh facts and figures person i need to get like you know, the BC time rhyme, right? But at the end of matriarchy before, right as patriarchy was going to rise. So the myth is really important. It's about the death of, of the goddess. Um, mm. But before there was Jesus Christ, uh, you know, on the cross and um, being reborn, there was the, the myth of Inanna. Mm -hmm. uh, Inanna was the goddess of uh, heaven. Um, and she um, asked to descend to earth to feel 
the full gamut of emotion, pain, joy, love, loss, uh, ecstasy, um, in all, all this and suffering, you know, in heaven, it was just uh, enlightenment, peace, love, joy. And she said, I want to feel the fullness of the human experience, which, which is so important because, you know, we spend our days running from the human experience and and suffering and attachment, you know, uh, we will watch the internet all day. We will watch Netflix all day. We will eat or we will drink. We will smoke. We will do whatever we can to avoid the experience that Anana chose mm. to come. To. Um, and then when she was down here, she started to study the, the me's, which are the powers of the priestess of uh, mother earth. Mm -hmm. so the you know when you all the priestess work you hear about and so she started to understand the cycles of rebirth and death and reincarnation um and when she fully took those on and embodied those she said well why should i be afraid of dying um if we are always reborn like everything in mother in mother earth's orbit in mm -hmm. mother earth herself uh so when um when google google googlana I don't know how to say his name, G-U-G-L-A-N-N-A, -N -N uh, the bull of heaven. He was married to Ereshkigal, her dark sister in the underworld. He died and um, Ereshkigal, her dark sister, the goddess of the underworld, was in mourning. And Nana heard her cries and said, I'm going to go sit with my sister um, and pay, res pay my respects. Um, and everyone said on the surface said, you don't do that. You'll never return. You, nobody goes to the underworld. Uh, you'll only die. And she said, that's true. Uh, you know, this form of me will die, but I will return. You know, the eternal I will be back. Um, but she's still, there's so many different parts of this. She had a, a great servant called Ninshubar, who she said, if I'm not back in three days, um, please send for me. Uh, know that I, you know, I haven't, that I can't return by myself. Um, and that's, that, that sort of represents, um, I don't want to take too much time. Okay. So. No, it's okay. We have, we have plenty of time. <laughs> that sort of represents, um, you know, when you're in the, your underworld and you know, you're in, in an internal search, but on the surface, people are like, Nancy's gone crazy. Uh, you know yeah. what I mean? Okay. Well, absolutely. And, and I actually wonder, I mean, I'd kind of like to speak a little bit to that, if not now, maybe at some point, because maybe some people watching don't really even understand what is that underworld experience? Because I think you can be in it and you're just like, what the heck is going on? Like it's taken me years of like initiation after initiation after <laughs> to finally be like, okay, I'm right now in the underworld process and that's yeah. why I'm like this. And like, I can actually speak the language of it to even tell my partner, for example, like mm -hmm. I'm in it right now. I need, you know, if you're going to be around me, I need to hold space, for example. So mm -hmm. yeah, if you could so, talk about that a bit, it would be helpful. Your, your partner, your partner. Yeah. Okay. This for you. So you would say, I'm in it to your partner. Don't try to save me. Don't try to help me. If I ask for help, yeah. Do something for me. But right. otherwise, I have to go through this. It's the only way I'm going to come out of it, right? Yes. So, um, that's Ninshabar. It's that person that's like, okay, I'm going to hold space for you up here on the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't come back in three days, I'm sending in, I'm sending in help, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, or, you know, and, or they know you, they know you enough for when you say, I can't do this alone anymore. Mm -hmm. and that's when you call up your shaman or whatever it is. You yeah, know? yeah. For me, I call my shamana, you know, I'm like, yeah. oh. um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been down here a little too long. Um, so um, the underworld is usually uh, comes after a loss, a mm. loss of health, uh, joy, vitality, um, a partner, a loved one, a job, um, you know, uh, it, it definitely comes. So, so what's interesting is when we are dying to our maiden, mm -hmm. um, a lot of women spend too long in the underworld because they don't know how to rise into mother. Um, and they yeah. don't, their maiden has died. So right. they just exist in nothingness, you know, mm -hmm. um, in, in death. Um, mm -hmm. and so, 
um, Anana went down, she told Ninshabar, um, and there's seven gates down to the, the underworld where Ereshkigal holds court. Um, and I'm not sure if Anana thought that she could just like walk, walk through the gates because she was, you know, who she was. But Ereshkigal made sure that the underkeepers at every gate stripped her of a material possession or, or some, uh, something that represented her ego, something that represented her, the upper world. Um, mm -hmm. So that by the time she was down there, and I go into all those gates and stuff in the course, but yeah. by the time she was down there, uh, she was naked on her knees, the way everybody enters the underworld. You know, I am at a loss. Mm -hmm. I am on my knees. That's how mm -hmm. we are in the underworld. I cannot take one more step in the skin I am in. I am yeah. done with my yeah. old life. Help me. You know, mm -hmm. that's where, that's when Anana goes, oh, you want my help, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and um, Ereshkigal um, is so angry because Ereshkigal is the epitome of the essence of the dark goddess. She holds the pain of the world. She is the repressed feminine. She is our repressed pain, joy, suffering. No, no, no. Take away joy. Sorry. She is our repressed uh, suffering, jealousy, anger, wrath, um, everything we don't allow ourselves to feel, loss. Mm -hmm. You know, she's our repressed pain, the repressed pain of the world, the shadow that we refuse to look at. Mm -hmm. And um, Inanna, Inanna comes down there, um, and Ereshkigal is so angry because she holds all this pain that she kills Inanna, hangs her on a meat hook. Um, and she's also in her grief, you know, how women in the underworld make crazy decisions, you know, they mm. say crazy things, they look crazy, they, they, like, they burn their house down and get in the car and, you know, start a new life somewhere thinking that they can just like start over. Like, it's just like, they do stuff that we'd call crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and Anana, I mean, Ereshkigal is moved by that insane grief. Uh, she kills her sister. And then immediately doing that, she's like, my husband's dead and I just killed my sister. So she, Anana's rotting on a meat hook. And Ereshkigal is uh, just like overcome with, you know, what did I do? I'm in so much pain. Um, so they're the, both of them are just lying there helpless. Mm -hmm. um, Shabar, three days later, which is the cycle of life, death, rebirth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Three days later, Ninshabar goes to uh, a few different kings of the upper world. Um, it, the first two are her fathers. Uh, both fathers deny, and I forget their names right now, both fathers deny um, helping Ninshabar because they are of patriarchal mindset where she... Uh, broke the rules, she should be punished. She knew better. Uh, she went to the underworld. Nobody comes back from, from the underworld. End of story, we can't help. Third god, he's the god of water, Enki, E-N-K-I. Uh, water, the feminine, forgiveness, love, mm. healing. Um, he says, I'm going to help you, Ninshabar. I My love for Anana will figure something out. He sends these, He so it's, it's, um, Sumer, which is like there's clay everywhere. Like he has there's clay under his his nails. He he takes he carves two little beings out from under the clay under his fingernails, mm -hmm. and they're like little flies. And he sends them down to the underworld. Um, and what they are is they are compassion. Mm. So, and no one has felt compassion for the dark goddess. We only fear her, right? Mm -hmm. So um, these they fly over um, Ereshkigal, whose moaning sounds that sound both like uh, death and birth, right? Mm. They bring you the same cry, right? Right, right. Uh, and that's, you know, a beautiful metaphor that they are the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They cry, right? Right. And so um, the little flies say, what is the matter? And she says, I lost my husband. And they say, you lost your husband. As I always get emotional. Mm. Um, and they say, I, I, she, I killed my sister. You killed your sister. I'm in pain. You're in pain. I'm afraid. You're afraid. I'm alone. You're alone. Mm. They don't try to fix her. Mm. They don't tell her what to do. They just hold space and hear her. And this ultimate yin, you know, womb of the war underworld, right? Mm. It heals her so much to be heard, right? There's only one. Heal and hear are just the, cl they're such close, they're sisters in words, right? Yeah. You just 
switch the R and the L. Right. And uh, it, heal, it heals her so much to be heard that she says, I want to give you a gift for, for your compassion. And right. they say, like a Nana. And she says, you can have a Nana. But I'm sending up uh, one of my servants to make sure because, you know, in everything, the, the nature of her is a vacuum. So where she's been, she must be replaced. Somebody needs to be sacrificed in her place. So she has to go back up through the gates and she gains everything she lost. But this time the crown is of, you know, for me, the queen, not mm. the princess, the goddess mm. crown mm -hmm. um, at the final gate. Um, and she goes up um, and she sees all these people crying and mourning for her in the streets. But what I didn't say in the beginning is she'd just been married to a shepherd named Demutsi. Mm -hmm. He's not mourning. He's sitting in her throne, enjoying the power that she had, you know, mm -hmm. um, sitting in her place. And that doesn't, as with any woman, that wouldn't go over well. <laughs> <laughs> you don't miss me. You're sitting in my crown, like when my throne using my servants, like, you know, with his, I picture him with like his leg over the, you know, like smoking a joint, like just <laughs> says, okay. she sends him down in her stead. And she says, you must go down and learn um, the, of the wounds of the feminine and the cycles of the feminine. And mm. you must sit with your shadow. Mm. Uh, and then his sister, because I haven't taught this in three months, I forget her name. Anyway, she's so uh, balanced in her masculine and feminine that she says, um, may I go down half the year? Um, so that my, my brother can experience life at least half the year and I will experience death half the year. And um, Inanna is so moved by that offer that she says yes. And so then what happens is um, half the year the, uh, the feminine is down there and the masculine is up and vice versa. And it keeps the balance mm. of you know, the sun and the moon and the masculine and the feminine. Mm. And the balance of our light and our dark, our joy and our pain all of that right beautiful thank you yeah. i hadn't actually heard the full full-on version like that so there you go. <laughs> i love to awesome. tell it yeah so i i think we should talk just a little bit more about that underworld space because i think that this could be really valuable since um, both you and i have been navigating these spaces um what so you said one of the things you can do is, yeah, you call your shaman or your shamana is what you called it, right? What are some other tools that shaman. you, what'd you say? My female shaman. Yeah, your female shaman, yeah. What, what do you think some other tools could be for women who are just like, what's happening to me? I'm going crazy. Like who don't, I mean, who might be watching this postpartum, for example, and feeling those kind of things? Anything that comes to mind when you're in that underworld space? I mean, this is what I tell the, the women that take the call. Unfortunately, stay in it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, um, let it happen. Do not distract yourself. Um, you know, tap, tapping. Yeah. I'm afraid. I'm alone. I am, mm. I am terrified of not existing. Mm. Am I dying? I'm afraid of dying, you know, and you do face your fears of death. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's the shamanic experience that people go and do ayahuasca for, you know, right. like right. to die before you die is mm -hmm. to learn how to live, mm. you know, what, yeah. When you are faced with death, you face, you, you grasp at what matters to you truly and the insignificant falls away, you know? No, I don't want to die. I never had a baby. I never wrote the, that book. I didn't tell my father I loved him. Mm. Okay, now you get another chance, mm. you know, yeah. with, with the caveat, do what you came here to do. Mm -hmm. Don't waste your time, you know? And to die to the maiden is to say, I'm halfway through if I'm lucky, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or I'm becoming halfway through. Um, I better step up as a woman and fulfill mm. my destiny. Mm. Yeah. You know, I better heal my wounds and start healing others. I better, I, um, I better step fully out of the closet of who I am. Mm, that's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That for me is really like what hits, yeah, the essence of it. And especially for me in my journey through 
motherhood. And it's still it's so interesting. My daughter's nine and I'm still going through so much of that transition in some interesting, weird way. I can't really put it into words, but I think you kind of just did for me, which is that, yeah, I'm continually unpeeling those layers. And since becoming a mother, especially, I have learned to release um, the belief that my worth is on the outside of myself, that my worth isn't something that I do or produce. And that's really a difficult one to, <laughs> to go through and embody, you know? And I think that, that that's really the gift of going into the, the underworld. And as you say, not interfering with it, just mm -hmm. allowing it to do its work, um, to turn you into the, the butterfly. And I love that analogy. I use that a lot too, that you have to, the caterpillar turns into liquid, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. but right. if you interfere with that process, you wouldn't get the butterfly. So, right, right. And so, um, Maureen Murdoch wrote that great book, the heroine's journey. Mm -hmm. And, uh, she calls that, um, aborting the process. Okay. Abort the process. You'll just have to go through it again. Exactly. So you fucking lie there. Yep. Take it. You know, yep. it is, and Nana is killing you with love. Mm. And that's what the dark goddess does to us. Um, and she holds your hand, talk to her. Yeah. You know, you're on your deathbed, like, you know, ask for her. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, you just said something and my mom brain was like, ooh, <laughs> I'm feeling the layers. You About know, worth, maybe. Yeah. And you said, you know, the, ex, you know, oh, right, right, right. So, so who are we, if we're not producing, if we're not doing, and that is, so what I call the descent is the dissent, D-I-S-S-E-N-T mm -hmm. from historical culture. Mm -hmm. So it's to dissent and to return to the wild feminine within us, um, the, the pre-tamed feminine, the powerful feminine, which is only when you face the dark goddess, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I am a girl, as the kids say, can you really yeah. come whole, you know? Right. Uh, just like the moon would tell you, I am not only light, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, what she just did yesterday was that eclipse. Yeah. She showed you in her darkness. She, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, how powerful that was. And so, um, so when we are lying there in the underworld, I mean, this is where I'm like, hashtag your privilege is showing because... <laughs> I got, <laughs> I got to borrow money from my sister mm -hmm. when I, you know, I blew through my, sa I was with a narcissist who, um, her father. So uh, my entire pregnancy, I was, they, what happens in narcissism is you, they, so often is you end up out of money. Like he, he took mm -hmm. and took and took money. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and then because the wounding was so bad, like I wasn't going to start teaching. I was healing mm -hmm. or you know, going through that. And so I wasn't, I blew through my, my savings of, and then I, and then I hit the underworld. I'd say I hit the underworld almost perfectly in fall, you know, um, just as a priestess of the earth, I'm really aligned with her seasons. Mm -hmm. So I hit it in fall, but I'm still not out of it. Like I'm coming out of it. Usually I, by spring, I'm back up on the surface, like, like all the flowers and the mm. animals. But, mm -hmm. um, so that who am I, if I'm not producing thing is, you know, who am I, if you take all the masculine out of me, you know, uh -huh. in my being, mm. am I, can I be loved for just being? Can mm. I love myself just for being? Not, I'm not, you know, winning anything. Nobody's patting me on the back. I'm not selling anything. I'm not getting likes on Instagram. Am mm. I, do I exist? Am I likable off social media, off, you know, off visibility, you know? And that is a really powerful medicine if you can say, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. I'm not going to say I'm like there yet or anything. <laughs> um, I, but I had to be. So I don't even, yeah. you know, I'm working with, you know, uh, yeah. watching, you know, I've been watching, I think I lost like 150 people on my Facebook, which is like, I guess like percentage wise, not a lot, but 
that's because I wasn't doing, they were not uh, interested. Interesting. You know? Yep. Yeah. Not their own stuff. Right. Right. But yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, thank you so much. We're starting to get close to, yeah, <clears throat> actually have a train to catch soon. Um, I do want to, before I la have one last question for you, I, wanna, I want to give you an opportunity to share about um, what your offerings are. And by the time this is launched, it'll be some months from now. So maybe who knows what will happen then, but what's going on now? What can people engage with? I'm just, my gut is just saying, let's see. You know. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. sounds good that yeah. sounds perfect yeah, yeah. but find you can find your i love following you on instagram oh, um what's your for, handle at nancy lucina oh yeah okay yeah for me authenticity is just so where it's at and that's the kind of people i follow so i just if anybody watching this, you know, if you're into authenticity, definitely follow her. Maybe you're not, you know. So, yeah, maybe <laughs> not, but it's just so nice to be able to learn from each other, from other women, yeah. from other mothers. It's so beautiful, you know. I, if there's one thing I really miss, it's sister circles, you mm. know. I, that's the, the best thing about retreats. It's just yeah, so yeah. Mm. And doing what the flies do was like, I hear you. And to hear, to hear each other is to heal each other. Yes. I'm actually glad that you brought that up and underlined that one more time, because I think that that's so important, um, especially for anyone listening who might be a birth professional or, um, you know, just someone who's su supporting women or postpartum mothers or pregnant women, he hearing them, listening to them, holding space without trying to fix that is yeah. so important. And sometimes that's only usually the thing that the, the mother needs is to just yeah. be able to express that. So I think that's really important to underline. It, 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 it sounds, um, it doesn't make much sense maybe, but it's true that motherhood can be incredibly isolating and lonely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it can it can feel thankless sometimes. Lonely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. even when they're nine years old, I mean, my oh, daughter. I you know, I'm like, oh wow. Yeah, it can be triggering in that way. Absolutely. So if you hear her, we'll de-isolate her. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So I have one last little question that I'm actually asking everyone. Um, now that you're a mom, if you could go back in time and tell yourself one piece of advice or one little thing that now you know that you maybe didn't know then, what would it be? Just a Wait, sentence or two. Before I was a mom. Oh, just like any advice in the world. Yeah. But like, what would you, did you need to hear something that you know now? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was always looking for joy. Uh, find the joy has been like my mantra since I was, well, since I was 17 and my mom died. And I was looking for it. And everyone's like, all of these, you know, life coaches and stuff, like your joy will bring you abundance and blah, 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 blah. And it's so simple, but it's inside of us. Mm, yeah. That's only place you'll ever find it and it's in there and you just have to tune into it and tap into it but you're not you're you know I kept being like is it horseback riding is it you know like, <laughs> and it's just like no, I'm not. It's just inside of you it's this moment yeah um, but not it's the present moment like not get heady about it it just right. lives inside of you right yeah, just yeah. go in there Beautiful. But you, before I went into mother, I didn't go in. I went out, out, out. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being um, here with us today. It's been such a joy to to hear you. And yeah, I feel your beautiful postpartum bubble. And like I'm <laughs> able to just sit, and, sit in it with you for a while. It's been super nice. <laughs> thank okay. you. Well, blessings to you and your daughter and your extended family. Thank you. Okay. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay, bye. I hope you catch your train. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> bye. <laughs>